Welcome to the press announcement for America's largest free arts festival, Artscape. I'm Mindy Becerra from WBAL-TV, and WBAL-TV is once again proud to be a sponsor of Artscape, celebrating the 32nd year, believe that, 32nd year, 2013, from July 19th, 19th through the 21st along Mount Royal Avenue and Charles Street. Today we're here in the single carat theater, and theater performances, of course, a major part of the Artscape programming. To give us a little taste of what this theater offers is the single care players with Welcome to Baltimore. Hey, honey. Yes, darling. Great news. I just got offered a promotion. A promotion? Right here in Dallas? Not exactly. It's in a little place called Baltimore. Baltimore? Maryland. Maryland? And they said, oh, look, a VHS tape entitled, Welcome to Baltimore. A VHS tape? But honey, we don't have a VCR. I got one in my granny's garage, and I already set it up. Play. for joining us, and welcome to Baltimore, hon. Trademark, not approved. Since you're joining us here in this wonderful city for the day, why don't we start by visiting one of Baltimore's famous farmer's markets, one of them located conveniently right under the expressway. Delicious. Now that we've eaten, I think we should go to the ballpark since it's baseball season. But how should we get there? I think we should take one of Baltimore's excellent modes of public transportation, the MTA, the circulator, the light rail. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be good. <laughs> well, here we are at Camden Yards, one of America's most beautiful and storied ballparks. And the best part is, we're the only people here. <laughs> Baltimore is not just home to sports, it's home to many artists and cultural icons. Edgar Allan Poe, uh, Billy Holiday, that's right, that's where America's most famous and storied cultural icons come to slowly de degenerate. Um, well, it's been a wonderful day. Thank you for joining us here at Welcome to Baltimore. Baltimore, as you know, the city that reads, Mobtown, Charm City, the Eaton on the Chesapeake, the land of pleasant living, the greatest city in America. How do I know it's the greatest city in America? The bus stop benches told me it was. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. Oh, I thought it was one of Baltimore's famous rats, but it looks like somebody just dropped a weave. Well, thank you for joining us here and welcome to Baltimore. Have a blessed day, y'all. Oh, Ralph, you got 65 cents for the bus? Very clever, enjoyed that, thank you so much. And to tell us more about the Single Care Theater and their programming during Artscape, please welcome Elliot Arwa, Managing Director of Single Care Theater. Hey everybody, welcome to Single Care Theater. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders and managing director here at the Single Care Theater, and we are just thrilled to not only open our doors for this event, but for Artscape and to be a part of the Artscape experience. We are not just going to be part of Artscape in the LOL at Artscape, which is the late night portion. We're going to be opening our doors all day. So at any point, we are thrilled to be interacting and reaching out to the up to 300,000 individuals that are going to be coming through this wonderful, wonderful arts venue. Um, Single Carrot Theater loves living in this city because we understand and the mayor understands the power of the arts. And this is why Baltimore has helped us grow from an, an idea in somebody's head years and years ago into uh, an, a nonprofit organization where we are paying living salaries and becoming homeowners and really diving in and growing with Baltimore. And we aren't going to be here too, too long at Charles Street, but we are moving to a wonderful new location in the Remington neighborhood 
up at 26 and Howard Street. We're working with a local developer who understands the power of arts and community building through arts. And we're going to go up to 26 and Howard Street in early 2014, and we're going to be looking forward to expanding our education and outreach programs by having a fully functional state-of-the-art theater in addition to a community space rehearsal hall. And we are looking for you to help us design the programs. If you have ideas for us to interact and engage with our new neighbors up in Remington and Central Baltimore, please come and talk to us. We don't want to just build programs that inspire us. We want to build programs that the community needs. Um, so with that, I want to thank you all for being here again. Thank you, Mayor, for joining us today in our theater. And uh, we are very much looking forward to seeing you back in July. And there's air conditioning here. So we'll see everybody back in July. Thank you so much, Elliot. Well, as you know, Artscape is produced and managed by the Baltimore Office of Promotion and the Arts, and each year they add something new and different. It's always so much fun to see what's going to be new at Artscape. And to tell us about the latest endeavors is Bill Gilmore, Executive Director of the Baltimore Office of Promotion and the Arts. Thank you, Mindy. Welcome, everybody. So, as you know, Artscape features an abundance of uh, performing and visual arts both outdoors and indoors um, during the three-day festival. Dance, theater, opera, classical music, it's got a little bit of something for everybody. No other major arts festival um, in the country provides this kind of arts programming absolutely free. So years ago, members of Baltimore's cultural community came together to create Artscape in order to showcase established and emerging artists and the Baltimore Office of Promotion and the Arts is continuing with that mission today. So one person who was part of that establishing group was Fred Lazarus, president of MICA, the Maryland Institute College of Art. So just a few weeks ago, Fred announced that he would be retiring. So in honor of his dedication to Artscape, the Baltimore Office of Promotion and the Arts has created the inaugural Fred Lazarus Artscape Prize. <laughs> so the Fred Lazarus Artscape Prize will be open to visual art students who will be a rising high school senior in the summer of 2014. The winner will receive a thousand dollar cash award along with their own show at Artscape in the summer of 2013. The prize includes an allowance for materials and supplies and they'll work with uh, BOPA's professional tutorial team. The contest details will be posted on artscape.org in December 2013. So let's give a round of applause to Fred Lazarus who's here with us today. Fred. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Bill. Well, as you know, artists from all over the country come to Artscape to perform, exhibit, showcase their talents, in the artist market, on the stages, on the streets, and all kinds of other venues as well. And to give us a scoop on what we can expect this year, of a mayor, Stephanie Rawlings Blake is going to give us the 411. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you, Mindy, for your kind introduction and for offering your. Uh, your talents to this morning's event. Yesterday, Memorial Day marks the unofficial start to summer, even though I always say it's the, the flower mark, but you know, for the rest of the country, it is Memorial Day. So summer in Baltimore means festivals, including Artscape, America's largest free celebration of the visual and performing arts. The 32nd annual three-day festival is expected to once again attract more than 350 thousand people and generate an economic impact of more than 25 million dollars for Baltimore City and further establish Baltimore as one of the most creative and arts friendly cities in the country. Definitely creative thanks to the uh, performance this morning so can we give them another round of applause. Thank you. So Artscape would not be possible without the generous contributions and support of many of our sponsors, including Wells Fargo, Charm City Hospitality, and the Maryland State Arts Council. Also, support provided by many Baltimore City agencies is paramount to the festival's success. All of the organizations help keep uh, Artscape 100% free. 
This year's Artscape celebrates the visual performing arts with an international theme that takes you on an arts journey throughout the world, hence our airplane pins, if you're wondering. It's because we're, you know, we're going on a trip, an international trip. During the festival, more than 30 countries from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe will be represented in programming. The exhibition, No Passport Required, will be a mile-long mashup on Charles Street of artists showcasing the international theme. Known for its variety of musical performances, Artscape features concerts on four outdoor stages. The biggest stage is the Wells Fargo Main Stage, welcomes exciting performers. R&B and urban contemporary singer Kim on Friday, July 19th, co-headliners New Orleans uh, group, the Dirty Dozen Brass Band, and the North Mississippi All-Stars on, on Saturday, June the 20th, and finishing out the weekend with the reggae legends, the Whalers, on Sunday. That sounds like a lot of fun, right? Yeah. Other festival highlights include the return of Squonk Opera Go Road Show, a musical spectacular on wheels. Who comes up with these titles? I don't know. The 10,000 Brushes and the Baltimore Mural Experience allows festival go goers to become the artists as they participate in the, crea the creation of a pop-up mural. I'm very excited about that. The Artscape After Hours transforms the 17 and 1800 blocks of Charles Street into an outdoor dance club with DJs, lightings, lasers, and special effects. I'll be there. Who was that woohooing? Are you going to actually dance or are you just woohooing for the heck of it? Who was that? Are you, was that you, Fred? I, ex I expect to see, really? You heard it on, we have it on tape. If I'm there, I have a dance with Fred. So the popular art car show, now celebrating its 20th year at Artscape, moves to a fun used car lot atmosphere on Charles Street along the Crazy Rays Art Car Lounge. The m and Artscape uh, Gallery Network showcases artists at two dozen galleries throughout the metro area from June through August. And the Artscape in the Neighborhood program puts a spotlight on many activities taking place in Bolton Hill, Mount Vernon, and the Station North's North Arts and Entertainment District. And just prior to Artscape, we will find out who will win the $25,000 Janet and Walter Sondheim Artscape Prize for Visual Arts on Saturday, July the 13th at 7 p.m. at the new location of the Walters Art Gallery. This is just a short list of the many activities taking place at Artscape, indoors and outdoors. Artscape is a unique annual event that you can only find in a great American city like Baltimore. Every year, thousands of people come together, see old friends, meet new ones, and by exposing yourself to new artists and their creation, you can see the world in a new way. Standing among the, the unique clothing and jewelry, smelling the great food, eating the great food, and hearing the wonderful music, we have an opportunity to renew our love for Baltimore at an exciting time in our history. For the first time in decades, Baltimore is growing again. We're reforming government, tearing down more blighted homes than ever, building new schools and recreation centers and focusing on lowering crime in our communities, all while re reducing property taxes for our residents. We are convincing more families to stay and attracting new families to our great neighborhoods. It is an exciting time for Baltimore knowing that Baltimore's best years are uh, yet to come. I want to again thank all of you who work so hard every year to make Art State Artscape one of Baltimore's most dynamic, exciting, and cherished annual events. In the coming years, we look forward to introducing new families to this great Baltimore tradition. We have a terrific new way to keep up to date we have to always keep up with technology. To keep up, with, to, uh, keep up to date with the festival schedule, the artist market participants, food vendors, sale items, fringe events, guest services, and more on your smartphone. We are pleased to announce for the first time a mobile app is available for Artscape for Apple and Android devices. So I'm asking you to take a moment right now. If you have your phone, right? If you have an iPhone or an Android phone, get it out. Go to the App Store and search for, what do you think, Artscape, and download the free Artscape app. This image, uh, the image behind me is a rendering of how the app's homepage will appear, appear on your phone. Encourage your friends and family to download the Artscape app for the latest festival info. You know, I'm looking forward to this event. It's usually the hottest weekend of the month, the most fun, especially if you like people watching. 
I think that should be another feature in the Artscape thing. We should have, is that, we have room on the app for that, for our people watching part. So I look forward to seeing everyone July 19th and 21st for the 32nd annual Artscape. Thank you all for coming out today. Thanks. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I downloaded the app. It was fast. It was very cool. By the way, the mayor can dance. I don't know if you've seen her. I've, she's saying, no, I disagree. So everyone's going to want to watch that. <laughs> Thank you so much. And for a complete schedule, up to the minute information on Artscape, of course, download the app or you can go to artscape.org. In just a moment, we're going to have refreshments, but I think the mayor is going to be kind enough to answer some questions from you all. And any questions? Do we know what's going to happen to this theater when I don't know. Do we know what's going to happen to this theater when single carrot leaves? Anyone? Anyone? No? I can say that the great thing about this community is there's a lot of interest in uh, the properties around here because the art uh, and the artists have made it such a vibrant area. So I'm looking forward to the next chapter uh, for this building because I know it'll be a bright one. I think Artscape is like a ripple. It kind of it's moving, you know, out around. But, so there's no changes geographically. I'll get Gilmore up here for that. No, we're still going up to North Avenue, and the Art in the Neighborhood program is going to highlight things up on North Avenue, over the station on the entertainment district. So we are physically not closing more streets. So we, you know, we take all of these events very uh, seriously when it comes to providing uh, security. I know that in the wake of uh, what happened in Boston, everyone is looking at um, events, large gatherings, a little differently. So we'll, we will, uh, our our security pl plans for Artscape will include uh, making sure that uh, we have extra eyes on the street. But we also need, you know, our citizens to um, be vigilant as well. I mean, all of this is about making sure that we can get these hundreds of thousands of people in to enjoy the best of Baltimore, but it takes all of us to, to be a part of that. Any other questions? Uh, Mayor, I wanted to ask you, and I apologize for asking this question during this press conference, but about the uh, articles about the wedding, officiating mm -hmm. the lobbyists, how you respond to some of the criticism in those articles, the appearance. Well, I think I look nice there. What appearance? <laughs> well, you know, the fact that you're fishing at lobbies and lobby the city, so. Yeah, I mean, they got it cleared through state ethics, and, you know, out of the multiple hours I spent um, in Las Vegas doing the work for the city, which I'm very, very proud of. You know, when I first started going to the uh, International Conference for Shopping Centers, we had to spend all of our time trying to convince people to invest in Baltimore, trying to convince people that it was worth it. Uh, to uh, come into Baltimore's neighborhoods and invest. This year I spent my time uh, with different vendors and retailers that were fighting over locations to come to Baltimore. We've come a long way. And one of the things that uh, one of the developers I met with in, uh, in uh, Las Vegas said to me was that he, had, he could choose anywhere uh, to invest in, uh, to do business. And he chose Baltimore because he knows that we get it. When he sees a mayor out there hustling for business, meeting with uh, developers, meeting with retailers, uh, that he knows that the, the administration in the city wants their business to be successful. So, you know, out of all of that time I spent hustling and, and working to bring business, I, I, uh, as many do when they're um, on business, I, I enjoyed a little break to officiate a wedding that was cleared by uh, state ethics, and it was uh, enjoyable. Yes, sir. Uh, this is not really a question, but more a comment. Uh, thank you to Bill Gilmore and his office, because early on I was a little hesitant about Artscape's expansion to North Avenue. But as a small business owner, it has really just hit our bottom line, has impacted our bottom line in a great way. And it's been a great boom for the otherwise slow July season for business owners in the area. So thank you for coming into the 17 and the 18 empty blocks of North Charles Street. Thank you, and I'll have to venture up there for some of your mint tea. <laughs> Anybody else? Uh, Mayor, I, I have another question. Okay. Uh, it, I like the app, by the way. Mm -hmm. I'm already using it. Um, Thanks, I take full credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask, uh, where, where did the theme come from? And has Artsy always had themes? Uh, it feels like a city fair or a world's fair thing as opposed to Artsy. 
Well, Artscape has always had a theme. I mean, like if you if you're a t -shirt, Artscape t-shirt collector like I am, you can see that the themes running throughout uh, history. Um, but you know, I think last year we had a road trip theme. Was it last year or the year before? Last year we had a road trip. This year we're we're taking on wings. You know, we always try uh, to um, you know to have a theme to evoke the emotions uh, and tie in uh, some of the thematic decorations around uh, Artscape. And we have Baltimore is a city of of neighborhoods and. Uh, the uh, the ethnicities, the rich culture in our city adds to the artistic expression that we have. So I think it'll give people something to uh, to be uh, supportive of. And is Southwest one of our sponsors this year? Yeah. It's also helpful to them, right? <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for coming out. Enjoy.